it is Cinnamon Cooney, your art Sherpa, and today we are going to be doing our tribute piece to Supernatural, one of my very favorite, favorite shows on TV. I've been, uh, I guess we're watching now for what, 15 years? Oh, yeah. So uh, this is called Bye Bye Baby, and it is a tribute piece because we're in our last season of Supernatural. If you've never watched the show before, before you go watch it, because I said I like it, first season's kind of scary. But it gets awesome after that. They kind of figure out who they are, and then the writers and everybody just comes together, and this crazy magic chemistry happens, and then the best show on TV occurred. You do have to get through about six really terrifying episodes to get to that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I actually put a tribute to the first episode in this painting, which Dee's already figured out, so go TG. <laughs> so what this is going to be is I'm going to explain to you step by step how you can create this painting for yourself at home. So during this live stream, I'm going to be breaking down the process. I'm going to be explaining the color mixes. I'm going to be explaining the techniques. John is going to be zooming in on the mic is my husband, John. Hey, guys. He is the runner of the Texas Snowflakes, which is our bubble machine. But he also runs a bunch of cameras. Make sure that you're zoomed in on the action. You can see all the stuff happening with the brush. You can see the color mixes. You can be all part of the process. The idea being Texas Snowflakes, that you can do this for yourself at home. Because the whole idea of fan art is that you get to make it. Fan art is fun art. Now, this is fan art. So uh, the thing I always like to remind people is remember that... Um, you shouldn't get too commercial with fan art or really commercial at all. It's okay to do something because you love it or you're going to a con or you're making a costume. A lot of these different properties really support it. I know Supernatural is very supportive of its fan and fan art. But just remember, they have the right to monetize and make money off of their, their property. Is, the, is, my, my, is that a good uh, explanation, John? I think so. Yeah. I just always like to do that because sometimes when you're really new to art, that's not something that you would know. Yeah. But of course, you know, if you want to give one of these, to a family member over the holidays, I imagine the creators of the show would think that was pretty awesome sauce. But I don't speak for them. That's just my opinion. Mm. <laughs> I'm so weird. Are you guys ready to just get I into this great painting? Jump in. All right, here we go. Over here, you can see some of my Sam and Dean references um, for the back of them and hair of them. I've got my first color of paint that I'm going to be using, which is black. So I'm going to put that out because we're going to begin this piece with the canvas all black. Now, if you look in the description below, you're gonna see a link to our website. You're gonna see a link to our website. And if you click that, it's gonna take you and you're going to have access to our Enochian alphabet guide. You're gonna have access to the step-by-step, -step, uh, different grid. You're gonna have access to this grid. This was my grid, because I don't know how to do cars. Um, huh. <laughs> This is your grid once I worked out cars and had to stuff those two guys kind of here. <laughs> so that's what we did there. Um, and all of that's there for you to use and for you to download. And it's really designed just to help you get through this piece. I I'm going to put our gorgeous piece aside. I'll talk about it a little bit. So this is definitely the correct car. <laughs> uh-huh. 67 Chevrolet Impala. Yes. With the season one license plate KAZ two Y five, we got a little Enochian script up in the sky. Uh, if those of you who want to translate it, I think that that'll be fun to allow you to discover that it's a very important uh, thing from the show. Cr critical, in fact, I would say. Critical. Now over here, I have my eleven by fourteen surface that I'm about to paint black on it. I have some wishes because we always like to push some wishes and intentions into the universe when we do a project. We would like the cast and crew and creators and fans have the best last season ever. We all need a good last season of a show because some of us are embittered by other last seasons of other shows. And I really need this one to end okay, but I trust these guys are good creators. Um, from the chat Don't today, let it in. Huh? Don't let it in. Don't let it in. Don't let it in. Just keep okay. carrying on, my wayward son. <laughs> I need to. I need to. I have feelings. Uh, we have a wish for Betty that she's able to keep her faith in herself and her artwork and is surrounded by people who support what she's doing and don't say negative things. Sometimes we do have people that are negative and I wish her to get a nice influx of supportive art family. Um, this is also a uh, World Mental Health Day. And so my wish is that you take time to take care of your mental health. Mental health is like physical health and it has to be maintained and you want to keep it up. and 
you want to exercise great mental practices and if you need if you're in a state where you need to go see a doctor you should feel great about going and seeing a doctor i know i do i know john does yep. mental health much like physical health is just something that we maintain and then of course as i have been wishing a lot lately disney artist i'd like to be one yes i would like you to be one too the kids did not wash my brushes <gasps> they, i don't even know i give sink. these chores because they are not honored <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and just get um, a different brush than I plan to, a uh, number 10 silver white, <laughs> uh, wet, and load my black paint into it. And basically what I'm going to do here while we're all having a laugh and a talk, right, for our 13 days of Sherpa Ween, do I need look to... what all's back. Whoa. We got the kit back. What happened there? Oh, man. Don has been hooking things up. This takes so much longer to do with a small brush. Do you want me to pass you another brush? No, they're, none of them are washed. If they're not here, they're all dirty. Well, luckily I have magic hands. Oh, you have magic hands. Chores in our house. Wash mama's brushes. <laughs> this is crazy. I'm going to be done with it by the time you do wash a brush, John. I'm just saying, it's like... I'm like, well, maybe not. It's very slow. So this is a good lesson. When you're painting a surface, it's important to size your brushes. Uh, oh, okay. To the canvas. I've just switched to my number 30, and you can see that that does definitely do fast work of the surface. My mic, there's. It might help just a touch. Maybe a little. There you go. It picks up the speed of putting down the paint. I mean... It's just got to be black. It doesn't got to be perfect because we're going to be painting the sunset right over it. So when I was doing this, I, uh, one, initially was for sure going to do the Impala. But then, uh, based on everyone talking, I realized I had to somehow figure out how to get Sam Dean in the painting. And so I was like, well, we're going to Sherpa girl him for sure, <laughs> which means from behind. Because when you're new to painting, it's a lot easier to do figures from behind when you're not having to deal with facial features and all of those extra challenging bits. Now, to grid in, I've got to dry this. Otherwise, I will have black paint all over myself. Thank you so much. And I'm going to I'm gonna dry this all up. John has just stunt-handed beautifully. I think we should all okay. congratulate him. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to smoke machine that, right? <laughs> I don't know if anyone... Oh, there's some. And bubbles, Texas snowflakes, it's boom, 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 boom. So, you guys, thank you for coming and joining us today. We're trying to get some of our technology back here so we can have a little bit more fun with you guys. Um, we really appreciate you coming and join, joining us. It's, uh, <laughs> it's uh, good to have you guys with us. So, um, don't forget, if you need any of the information about kind of what we do, up oh, there, there we go, look at that. There she is. Uh, you can find it in the link in the description down below. Um, your uh, Our website's there, uh, the uh, link to the traceable, the all, all the all the materials that she was showing you earlier today, those are uh, conveniently linked down there uh, along with the project page. And so if you go to our website, you'll find that each each of these pay, each of these videos we have has a corresponding project page, and on it you find a list of materials, all of the stuff that she's collected up that might be relevant to this. Mm -hmm. on That's the project what pages. we like. We do that. You try to make it as easy as possible. I do try to make it easy, easy as possible. I think I'll use this blue chalk because I lost my white chalk. So what this is is a jar of different kids chalk that I have purchased different places. It's just the kind that goes on chalkboards. It is not a serious thing. Let's get our reference. For this our gridding reference which is right here and so here's the two ways that we get this in the first way that we can get this in is use the transfer tracing method that is available for you on the website if you've never done it before I have a video on how to do it it's actually pretty easy and no it's not cheating and then the next method of getting something like this in is the gridding method now in full candor right because I'm from house candor now in full candor <laughs> for some of you that was funny in, John falls asleep during the show, so it wasn't funny for him. I um, struggle with cars, so it's going to be a journey for me as well as you. I'm going to come here and match my grid, as you can see, three and a half, seven, ten and a half, and make marks. And then I'm going to go ahead and make those vertical lines. 
I like to make a mark where I'm starting from so that since I don't, you know, just necessarily equally space these grid lines, that way I know where I started. Otherwise, my whole grid will be off, and we've already seen me struggle with the still life, remember? Now this John? is just, you're using regular old chalk chalk, right? I'm using regular old chalk chalk. Just side, now it's not oil based. It's, it's, no, it's, never it's, oil based, guys. Always just, this, I like this because the pigment loads are low, even though they are, they do seem saturated initially to the eye. And um, it's easy and inexpensive to work with. So this one was at three, five and a half, eight and a half. And this is just if you're wanting to have that experience, you can say, I, I freehanded it in. I drew this, guys. Da, 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 da. Ah, da, 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 da. The tool I'm using is called a T-square. And it's kind of a cool tool. It just helps you draw straight lines because on my own, I wouldn't draw straight lines. I wouldn't. It would be challenging for me. And honestly, it's the middle lines that are super really, really important in this particular piece because that's where the car and everything happens. And you're going to watch me really like, you're going to see my, my gears a grinding through this next part. Yeah. Um, we all have stuff that is easy or more challenging for us, but um, one of the things that's super challenging for me is cars. Let me get my reference out. Okay. So I've got my one grid like this, and then I've got my car, so I can check it because I will artistically make decisions, and uh, car people don't like that. <laughs> well, I have this really strong feeling that their cars should be, you know, exactly what they are if you're gonna say it's a thing then it should be a thing i try to make it a thing it's really hard to make it a thing i'm literally using both so the idea of this is that you go into each square and you only draw what's in that square so like if i were to go here you can kind of see the hood of the car comes a little bit above the line just a smidge just a smidge and then just past the halfway point begins to travel down to the front of the car it doesn't go up there very far. So look, I've drawn a, a roof, which for me is really a thing. Now, the other area that I was able to anchor this uh, Impala in was the back end because it had this really unique, distinctive back end. And it kind of came to a cool point. So I was like, oh, I could probably get something like that worked out. So I'm going to make that little diamond shape right here. Right now I've got a roof and the diamond shape. I've just got to figure out how far the trunk's going to come in about there and then I can kind of bring the rear end of that down. This kind of comes at an angle and you can sort of see that the wheel is right here. So I know that the wheel comes underneath about to here. And then I'm just going to make a little circle. No, I'm not great at wheels either. <laughs> But don't ever, don't not do stuff because it's not your like easiest, greatest thing. You don't get better if you don't ever do the things that are hard for you. I, I, I have to say that I just really appreciate you doing this. The sp you, you definitely caught the spirit of this car. And <laughs> That's when I haven't done it mechanically, but John's pretty happy with the oh, effort I put No, in. I mean, like, I have no complaints. It's like, you can to you totally know what this car is. You, there, there's not a question. You know, in your mind, what's going on here? No, no. I mean, like, the, the, the lines are all, you know, they all imply the right thing. So. They imply the right things, them implied lines. I'm an implicator. You know, I'm just there's, trying to there's... do my little oval. And I come forward and I always make sure I get a little bit of the perspective on the wheel. When we paint it in, we simplify the painting just because, man, that is the only way to get through. So at the center line here is when we're going to start thinking about our next wheel. And it comes up to about here. And you'll notice in the step by step, it was definitely the same thing for me. So don't feel weird um, if you're like, man, my chalk drawing is very strange. Because mine was, and it still totally came out. I'm going to bring this forward, coming up over. And then there's definitely a steep angle that the car has going on here. Bring that that way. Now the other thing I can get is maybe this this front windshield comes down 
and then there is a hood that comes forward and this is definitely going to be a couple of little moments because there's this weird junk what do you call it growly or prowly there's this line to the car that's super important apparently profile i don't know what you're i don't know man you were talking all the time about it's growling and oh. you gotta make sure it growls and i'm like dude <laughs> i am doing everything i can do so this particular year model had a really um aggressive kind of grunty front end it's and got a something for it. Those the, the pointy angles and inset lenses, those all speak to that. And I think that you did a really good job of sort of capturing the feel of that. It's really tough to like get that angle and get the bumper and get that top of the car. But I do it. I do it for you. And honestly, because I too am a fan. Like, the easiest thing to paint from the franchise would be Castiel. <laughs> and I thought about it real hard. Make that another line up. And then this is sort of interesting because this comes almost to the halfway point right across here and a little bit past is that line. And so that helps you bring in that hood line. And then this can then help you bring in this weird hood line. See how we're getting it? Yeah. And that's what we do. We just kind of work that out till we get it. Now, there's the straight line that comes across here that kind of matches up there. But then the fenders do some interesting things. This fender swoops down. They do. And that fender swoops down. Those I have are no your idea muscles. how or why, but it does. Those are the muscles. Okay. They show you that I'm a muscle car. I would like to point out that the only car artist that is officially a car artist that I'm aware of on, on YouTube actually teaches kids art. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't have a tutorial for me so well, so my, fr my friend ian did actually give me he was like here's how you do a car he did an interesting thing on how to do cars chip foos chip foos chip foos is an chip amazing Foose. uh automobile designer and concept artist and uh -huh. if so if you wanted to look at like how to draw cars um he'd that be a great be place guy. to start um, ed roth yeah well sure you know I, I like his work. And then the window is sort of at an angle right here. Ed I Roth, felt like we, we were doing so much with the car that I didn't really push the, uh, um, the, uh, all the little final details. I was like, we got a lot going on here. Yeah. So this is me just paying attention. When you're real familiar with a thing, you tend to go really fast through it. But when you're working out like uh, art challenges like I am right now, you've got to kind of slow down and be like, uh, some stuff. Those one angles, is... they're important. You know. Huh? Those now, angles. This is one of those times where like traceables, useful. Traceables are useful. With the guys, all I'm going to do is sit there and say, you know, he's he takes up this space right here. And then this guy is going to take up this space a little bit taller. So Dean here is shorter, infamously. Sam is taller. And, yeah, I got a little excited with the highlights on Sam's hair. <laughs> <laughs> he, the sunset really caught his hair is what I'll say. But the, I just want to know kind of basically where they are. So when I'm painting it in, I'm going to have to, like, put them back in, but I just need to know where they are. And you can kind of see that in the step-by-step. As we go, right? As we're going. Once I have that in, then I can go through with a uh, damp brush, right? So I just take a damp brush. This is one of my number 10 brights from my Archer line and just remove the chalk line. You can kind of see what you've got. Sometimes when you get the chalk lines out, it'll help you see uh, what you've drawn. You don't have to be too precious about it because we're literally painting over. Well, gosh, everything. But I just want you to know I felt very accomplished. I drew to the car. You did. I drew to the car. It all is in. I cannot imagine having to deal with anything that for me is particularly harder. I would just do city streets all week, forever and ever and ever, all the time, rather than dredge it at a car. 
Oh my goodness. I think we're also missing the round brush. I, oh wait, I think I've got a couple. I've got a couple. All right, so I'm okay. So I'm going to be using big chunky rounds uh, and I'll give you examples of, of some different ones. Um, I like this because it does a nice job on the sky. Just pick your loud, like larger fluffy brush to do this. This is what I'm using. I'm going to use one of these three. I don't even know which one I'm going to use yet. But the sky is pretty simple. We got a lot of quinacridone magenta. We're going to use a bunch of doxazine purple. I'm going to go ahead and grab a titch of uh, cad yellow, but not a lot. I don't even use it in uh, Sam's hair. All right, so we've got those, those. We definitely need some titanium white. Put that out. And I might go ahead and throw in some phthalo blue. So we're just trying to make that late in the day sunset with clouds that are sort of blowing up. That's all we're doing. That's all we're doing. Now, if you used a different size canvas, mm -hmm. could you just make more sky? You could make more sky. And on the web page, I included some tools to help you resize easily. Gotcha. So cool. there's a uh, tool that lets you resize the traceable to a larger size, and there's a tool that allows you to grid it to a larger size. You just grab the picture of my painting and stick it in there, and nice. it'll grid it for a larger size. So I do try to make it where if you have to, for some reason, customize it. I do recommend if you can paint with us just like one time, it's a good idea. I'm going to take a little of my purple into my magenta, and so it kind of, you know, Warms it up. I'll grab a little of my titanium white, which will bring out the color. And we're going to come from the top. And we're just going to sweep back and forth as you do. Get a little more of that. Sweeping back and forth. That's all it is. It's just sweeping back and forth. Just imagine that there's a, a blustery day afoot and it's blowing, blowing the clouds upwards. I'll grab a little bit more magenta here, and I'm still sweeping back and forth. Now, and everyone I, out here would like to thank you, Cinnamon, for another wonderful 13 days of Halloween. I am so glad this year went so well. It has been a real joy to do this this year. I'm going to get a little more bright pink here. And let's uh, make some more interesting clouds. Sweeping up. This, I, I picked up the number 12 Silverstone. It's one of my favorite brushes. It is a bristle brush, but I just find it does what it does quite well. Just swinging up those little fluffy clouds. Fluffy, fluffy, fluffy clouds. Come down here with some pink. And the pink can go down to about here on the car. Down at the tailgate. And we're going to just keep doing this. This is our first layer of sky. And I'm just trying to have some brushy up brush strokes. That's all we're doing at first. Who can't have make time for brushy up brush strokes? I don't know. Maybe somebody. It's like, I don't got no time for brushy up brush strokes. We can totally make time for it. We have time for it, though. I can come forward and add a little bit of purple. And you can see that goes right on, right over the black. And it's real pretty. Just blending that back and forth. Notice that they're very uneven edges. See how we're getting that? And we're being very expressive. Sometimes if you're very, very orderly, it can make the sky a little hard to do. Nothing wrong with being orderly. That's not what I'm saying. I'm going to grab a little of our blue. And go ahead and maybe add some up here. Oh, look at that. Isn't that pretty? Each time you do it, the big thing I want you to pay attention to is those little magic moments. Don't take away your magic moment. This magic moment. moment. What is this I'm magic moment we're thinking so about here? I don't want too much blue near the car because I'm going to use blue and purple to make the black car. Because that's what you do with black things. If you painted with me for a while, you know that's like my go-to move with anything dark colored. Purple and blue and pink. Yay! <laughs> a little more of my magenta here. Magenta. On there, and I'll just blend that in. And this is how I get these skies. And you'll see I can go right around around the boys. They don't mind. This is their this is their perfect sunset. They've won. 
They've saved the world for the final time, right? And they know everything's okay. I'm wanting you to know I'm painting this now before I see the ending of any show again. I'm going to paint my ending. Right. Before I ever allow another show ending to happen before I paint my final version. I'm going to go ahead and get into my purple. I might grab some white here. Just come here and make sure that this shows the purple sky that I've got going. Purple sky. There's some purple rain right here. There we go. And I like to rinse out every once in a while. And that's just so that when I'm painting, I don't get my brush too muddy. Again, any big chunky brush that you have. Fluffy, fluffy back and forth. I've got a little more pure magenta here. I might need some white into it. You can see that's always super helpful. Right around the car. Oh, there we go, there we go, there we go. Just touching that around, rinsing that out. While that is all having a little bit of a resty, I'm going to go underneath the car with the first layer, which is some blue. I may grab just a little bit of white so that I can come underneath here. I'm going to come back with my turquoise for sure. But this is just that first layer of paint. See how that goes? Just a little bit of blue under there. Yeah. Um, if you've been uh, watching any of the design stuff lately, man, the, the pink and the blue from Harley Quinn through Pre Preacher through Supernatural, it is really happening right now. Have y'all noticed this? Yeah. It is like everybody's thing. They love that filter. <laughs> Trans. I'm going to add a little white into my mix just so that we have some tonality here. Yeah. See, I'm adding a little tonality. And I won't go too deep with my highlight under the car because underneath the car is supposed to be in shadow yet, right? So it's true. That would be just pointless to do. When this is kind of done and good. And I will sort of finger shape this. I'm going to grab just a smidge of my yellow into my pink. I don't want too much of the yellow in it. And I'll grab my white and I'm going to come along here. Maybe I want a little pinker than that even. I'm just warming it a bit. It's going to help the car kind of show up. See how we're doing? Yeah. There we go. You can always grab a little bit of the white into that. Ooh, I'll add that. That's real pretty. So as I go off, in times I'll be like, that's nice. Tap it around a couple places. And I think my last little touch on the sky, because I think the sky is looking pretty good. Pretty, isn't it pretty oh, much yeah. like that Arizona crazy sunset? Yeah. All right. So here we go. Just a little bit of the blue. Too much of the blue. <laughs> Sometimes you'll get just a little sm smidge of too much white. And really what that is is you just wouldn't have a cloud that light there. So I'm going to add some of these up here. Just dancing those in. See me dancing the brush back and forth, leaving lots of breaks and open moments. And I'm just on this messy, hot, messy toe. There we go. And those colors kind of play very nicely against each other. I'm going to rinse out really, 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 really well. Out there. And like then I'm going to have a sip of my sippy sippy and say hi to everybody and go smoke machine. Indeed. <laughs> now, what we're going to do next time is we're going to make sure that we can bring in more music. Oh, I got a little crazy with the smoke machine. Sorry. Did you? Yeah, I mean, it's going to be a little. <laughs> Smoke Somebody sing out. carry on. Not me. We don't want to. I only do that in traffic jams. <laughs> <laughs> you want to see me sing 
you better be following me places because who knows where I'm going to go live from what traffic jam, right? That's true. I may go ahead and take just a little bit of my pink with this number six bright. And I'm going to just come in and make sure that the space where I'm intending to put my guys is a little encroached more by the pink. And here's why. When I do the Enochian, I really want to know where they are. So this lets me kind of know where they're going to be. Right? Which is the location on the car that shows <laughs> the least Sam and Dean. <laughs> Along here. Just make sure that this is nice and beautiful, right? Never hurts you to do. Now I'm going to go ahead and put out my green. Which is all covered in bubble stuff now, John. Sorry. It's okay. I don't mind. And I'm going to start the process of painting in the car. Let me find my reference that I'm going to use for that. Anokian reference. Car reference. <laughs> <laughs> all good things, right? Yes. Mm, all good things. So if really what I'm going to be doing is blocking in some of those reflections and those those objects on the top of the car, you know, kind of getting the windows in, starting to think about that stuff. So let's first start about the windows. And the windows, I honestly started with a little bit of purple. So I come here and I'm going to just go over that black initially with a little bit of purple. And I'm just going to brush in my windshield. What are, you, what are they doing? Are they brushing in their windshields too? Yes, they are. I think so. I don't know. I don't, you can, you could. Vacuum. I'm watching you brush in a windshield. There, somebody, they're, or listening to me brush in a windshield. We are the worst ASMR on YouTube. <laughs> uh. <sighs> nope. We can put you to sleep, though. We sure can. <laughs> Actually, we're not, the, we're not the good ones to sleep to. We're the good ones to paint to and be able to stay conscious through the painting, but. Or, you know, if you want to just, like, clean your house and put us on in the background and listen to us on a big screen TV, I know that's another popular thing we could do. I am taking my paint and I'm mixing my purple with just a little bit of white so we can really see it. And I'm painting inside my guidelines for my, um, I'm going to add a little blue to this one so I can sort of tell my little side window from everything else. Because apparently that's an important window. Oh, and I forgot, we can't, we can't leave out um, our fitness watchers. Remember them? That's right. Ooh, ooh, yeah, <laughs> up that hill, up that hill. More reps. Go gym. <laughs> Go gym. Not at all. Okay, so I'm going to take a little bit of my white and I'm going to go into my blue and I'm going to come on top of the car. And I'm going to hit that roof just a little bit. Come down the back. <laughs> Just hitting the black car with this sort of reflection is what we're doing. If you guys know what I mean, Jelly Bean. I know a couple things. I'm gonna John's gonna have to keep me talking because again I'm doing a car, so my she's, inclination she's is thinking. to want to like think really hard she's on a focus this um, isn't focus, focus, this is not focus. on like cruise control no this is not like when i paint horses where i'm like i could be like juggling making pancakes not at all this i need to know what i'm doing so this first layer of this that i'm putting in i'm putting in with the blue as you can see and i'm trying to follow my car lines as much as i can Try to keep those lines straight because cars don't like organic lines. Well, you know, they don't like wavy panels where they're not supposed to be wavy. Right. It's a big thing for cars. I, you know, it's because body work is important. Yeah, I tend to paint cars like right after a major accident with a train. <laughs> after a hailstorm. <laughs> yes. Something major has happened to the car. But what you can see is I'm starting out by zoning the upper part of this car into like this blue space. I'm going to go ahead and come down here with blue and blue. 
I definitely want to have the blue here. Come down the front end again with the blue. I might grab a little purple and blue here and come across right underneath this windshield for a second. It's interesting because there's almost like a like a diagonal triangle of a shadow happening here. Now I'm going to come in with again the blue purple color and I'm going to come right underneath here. Yep. Start to shade that in. Get that all in darker. More purple. We'll come back with some black. Don't you worry. We've just got to make sure we've got these deep values in. And right here, we've got the grill and then this weird bumper thing. Yay, that thing. I come underneath here. How are we doing? Good. Really good. How I'm many just... people have translated the Enochian yet? I'm gonna I'll have to check that out. See who who all's done that. Cause you know, some of y'all do a really good job of that. No. I did and again, I in case you wanted to write a different saying, I did give you the Enochian alphabet so that you could do it. Also I gave it to myself so I could remember what I did. Truth, truth, truth. I'm going to get a little bit of my blue and white. And I'm going to come on the front part of this hood. I make sure I got a crisp angle down. This number six bright is helping with some of this. I'm using the shape of the bright to sort of help me with some of the car shapes. Come down towards that point. Right, that's a thing we're exaggerating. That's something we're doing. here kind of start the blue down that way now one of the blues and you can even do this you can take a little bit of the blue and some of the black is going to come back pretty sharp I'm just creating those little shadows because if you think about it this goes there and then That would come back that way. I'm just starting to plan and plot that in. So that's blue and black this way, coming across the front here. See how we do? Now a lot more blue into the blue and black mixture and a smidge of white. And we can start that part of the diagonal on the hood. Of that reflection and much like Christine I'm just trying to deal with the reflections yeah that's all that's, I got going on and that's really smart because I mean that's that's a lot of what car paint and automotive lines talk about are the reflections that are created and so by focusing on those so that's probably why you're very successful I don't know that I'm successful but it's what we're doing today I'm going to start the bumper, which is just black and white, create a dark gray, and I'm just capturing the shapes. I know I've got to do this in such a way that when I come in, I can get my um, license plate in, as you would want to. Now, this is, this, this for you is definitely in that three hoot range. For me, it's three hoot. I don't know about y'all. I'm just saying I'm in a three hoot day. But it could be a two if you're less daunted by, by cars. cars. Yeah, I'm going to come back here and add a little gray to the, or to think about that tire, right? Yeah. Like we do. The colors and a little.
Some tires in. Tires be hard, yo. And then underneath the tire, I like to get it quite dark. Bring it across here, and that's how I get the any kind of effective in on the tire. Across the ground. And I'm sure I'll have to adjust it coming back up. I am not Billy the Artist, I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> and if you didn't catch the inference, Billy the Artist is darn good at cars, okay? Like, wow, and motorcycles and mechanical things. So I hope to channel his energy today. Just starting to work out some thoughts on the tires. It's a good time to grab a little of the blue and the white together and kind of think about your, whatever those are that go over the wheels. Those are the fenders? Yeah, then those thingies. Yep, and that's fender trim. Okay. Sometimes you might have fender flares. But generally not on these. That's stainless steel um, fender trim on those. It's uh, generally, as, as I used to think it was chrome, but I learned that uh, stainless steel was actually used in a lot of those areas. There's some of them that are chrome, especially the aftermarket parts, but uh, the original high-quality GM parts tend to be stainless steel that's polished and then re -put back on, which I, a friend of mine who restores these, um, I got to learn that. He told you? He showed me. Dude, just, nice friend. Well, he was he was doing it for a customer's car, and I was like, why are you polishing the chrome? He's like, it's not chrome. Mm -hmm. And it was like, oh. And, and he explained how the stainless steel. Your friend's steel. probably worked on this car, hasn't he? Oh, there's several of them. But, yeah. I mean, he's worked on this model of car, yeah, I'm sure. No, for sure. And, and most of them are not the four-door, the two-door. The, the SS and, like, he has a 68 Yenko. 427 up there right now which just like it has oh. shapes i'm gonna take a little mental break here yeah so as we're going along in the step by step that's what we're doing we're just trying to block in different things so let's go over what we got we brushed in loosely a sky we used quinacridone we used thalo blue we used a little cad yellow we kept it a little bit warmer around the car that's going to help it one get that full sunset -y feeling and two it's going to really help it um have the blue car stand out, right? Because if I did a dark blue sky against the blue and purple car, it would just be gone. <laughs> It'd be camouflage baby mm -hmm. instead of, you know, baby that you could see. And you might want to see baby. Now, how I did the grill is sort of interesting. I'm going to like, make like a light gray on my number six bright. And I'm going to come here to where I have the little point, And I'm going to make these little... Grill. grill marks. They're not like technical grill marks. I, c I can't even stress that enough. And I'm going to come over here and make some darker grill marks. And they, uh, they meet up there. Sort of implying that little space. And I'm going to come back with my dark blue and make sure that, you know, my car comes here. Ah, nailed it. Sometimes that weird little forward point is darn hard to get. It, it is not even kidding. I was like, when I first did this, I was in it going, that's never going to happen. I'm going to just paint Castiel with huh. wings. Something that's easy to do. It's giving me a shot. He probably would like that, right? He'd probably be like, yes. Yes, paint Castiel with wings. My family will be impressed. I'm just adding a little bit of a highlight there to sort of capture some of that light that we would be seeing coming down that. And then I'll maybe grab a little more like just blue. So it's darker, but not, not black. I can always come back, interestingly enough, with just a little bit of my pink if I want to shave anything or do anything along this line. 
See that? <laughs> That's how I do, yo. I suppose this one's going to need a wheel. I may also want to grab myself a number four round for my set. Number four round. That'll help with the wheels. I'll make the wheels a little bit easier. I'm going to grab some white and some black. I'm going to paint a little wheel here. Oh, yeah, I did that. So it's pretty dark, and I'm going to use lighting to sort of illuminate it. I go ahead and, you know, put a dark color in the center. We'll shape out those wheels better in a bit. And I'm going to get purple and magenta. I'm going to come underneath here and color under the little hubcaps with that. Maybe even the wheels a bit. Get a little more of my light blue colorant with my number four round. Just make sure I've got a nice line that happening. Now the other thing that I'm gonna do is I like to have the wheel again a little bit dark so I'm going to make sure that this part of it is there's me going around the wheel Woo! This is why you almost didn't get any Sam and Dean. Oh, yeah? <laughs> almost, y'all? You didn't get any. It's true. Because I was like, dude, I'm going to come underneath this wheel with a blue line. And underneath the car a little bit with a blue line. And then here. And I think it's helpful to just... I'm going to give an art high five to Brian, who just became an official Sherpin patron. Brian, thank you. I appreciate that. That and, keeps me going in this kind of weirdness. And thank you to all of our patrons who are, I mean, you guys make it possible for us to do the 13 days of Halloween. You make it possible for us to have multi-switchy cameras. Multi-switchy cameras are so good. For us to have smoky, bubbly fun. and. You know, that's we gotta gotta have smoke. Gonna wonder fun. woman up in here. And, Wait, and no, I'm not. <laughs> what are you doing? I was gonna wonder woman, but it was like super effective in that moment, and I was gonna fall down. <laughs> ah, taking it in. Baby is coming to life. Ah, 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 ah. All of you using the traceable, I envy you right now. But thank you guys. We really do appreciate. I want to thank all my subscribers and the people who show up at all of our shows, too. That is, like, amazing. The support that we get is so important. And I really appreciate the support. The and comments and the shares and the patronage. All of it. To get a t-shirt, to show up to events. All of it. And it's fun. We have a, you know, our patrons have a little patron patron group on Facebook that we drop funny little patron stuff in. Yeah. So, you know, thank you guys. We, we try to, we appreciate you a lot. <laughs> we do a lot of weird stuff over there. Pretty much anything YouTube would like penalize me for, but I really, really want to do. Yeah. That's what you get. <laughs> and they get secret stuff in secret stores. That's true. In secret ways. That's patron true. only first. Not that secret, considering that you're telling everybody. All right, so <laughs> I didn't get the details. I just said I had a secret. Not that I was going to tell you. I have a secret, a secret, secret. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Secret, secret. I've got a secret. All right, sorry. I'm putting a little bit of a blue highlight curving around this part of the wheel right here. 
And that's just to really help me um, see the wheeliness of it. You need to see the wheeliness. I'm also going to take this moment to do my headlights. Headlights are hard for me, so be there with me as I try to do my headlights. So I got some headlight. I got a headlight here. It's round and it's going to be blue with maybe some white so it covers. <laughs> And then next to it is another little headlight. So it kind of puts them in perspective, or at least I felt it did. And then I'm going to come here and I'm going to have a headlight and headlight. And then there's also, it's just easier to kind of draw that mark in there and there so you know where stuff is. So headlight, headlight. Baby has to be able to see. It's true. Because we all know that, like, on baby's free time, she's as active as Christine. There's, like, a whole, like, she could have had her own show, right? True. I'm getting a little bit of a highlight. I'm just kind of accentuating the grill. Just a bit. This is important. I'll go ahead and put a little bit of this gray right here. And then right here. And get right in your black and really outline that. And then without the drops, my headlights have kind of like a, a liner around them and I may as I mentioned, put out a little fluid paint. Sometimes the fluid paint helps me do things like the writing or any of the fine lining. Um, you can also just add a lot of water to your paint, or you can grab, you know, a bottle of craft paint because that's also a fluid acrylic, and it'll mix with your high-end acrylics. Well, right around those headlights is a chrome trim ring that just glistens whenever those headlights are on. Okay, so. now I feel pr pressure about this. These. No, you're doing you're just fine. Okay, because I feel okay. So it's not you guys where I feel car, car pressure. It's John. <laughs> oh no, I'm just I'm I'm. Don't totally... let him fool you. He has so many opinions about cars. Let me put it this and way. And it's um, made me like I can't paint them. I, I have can't a lot of feelings anymore. about cars, but I I'm with Neil Tyson about paintings of this uh, of the sky. You if you're making an attempt and you emotionally connect the viewer with that vehicle then i appreciate what you're doing although i will say that you're layering the headlights there in a wonky way john just there you because know, you if the ones on the right the, the insides either have to be uh, you know i can't do this i love you don't do it please okay you got it <laughs> now i'm gonna like cry no you're good I was just trying to help you with your headlights there. It doesn't help me. Okay. You just give me so much anxiety. I give and you I, like, headlight anxiety. Out. Oh my gosh, so much. Okay. John, usually I can tune him out completely. It's, it's just super irrelevant. But when I'm doing stuff that is not uh, in my necessary wheelhouse, it can be really challenging. Yes, dude, I get it. This is a hard thing to paint. Painting cars, is there's a lot of technical details and... It's, you see, it's, it's, although it's good that everyone can see even the Sherpa struggles on some things. Oh, yeah. Well, it's not a secret. I've never held cars a secret, which is why y'all have waited for baby for, like, we're literally down to the last season. I've been on YouTube for how long? The whole time I've been on YouTube, people have been like, can you do, can you do Supernatural? Can you do baby? And now, just now you're getting it. That's an indicator of how much I might possibly, you know, struggle. <laughs> I'm going to take a little bit of my white, just my pure white, and I'm going to come right in the middle of the headlights while I'm here and go ahead and give them that hot sort of a little reflection. I may put out some of my black paint. Work this grill for a second. Uh. Ooh, it flowed. Let the, let the, uh, let the black paint flow. It's not like the spice, but it does its thing. 
So on the inside of these, I'm going to definitely capture a little bit of a dark line. That really helped. That. And then I want to grab a, a gray line. And I'm going to come along the top here. This is going to come down and it wraps around and it goes for it. It needs to be a little lighter than what it is. There we go. This is a trim piece. Yep. And then a lot more white for this part of the trim piece. Oh, because that chrome's picked up some of the. Some more light. So that's how I did that. So I got kind of convinced myself that it could be a bending is if it had that highlight there. So that's how I got that going right there. Yeah. <gasps> now, the other thing I definitely, definitely want to do is I want to get in my bumper sticker and my, uh, I mean, my license plate. And to do yes. that, I just use a small bright. This is a number two. I'm going to grab some white while I'm at it. And I come to right underneath where the bend is. There we go. I'm going to add some more black and blue into my bumper. And then I'm going to come and get some white trim. I'm waiting for the trim and I'm going to come underneath here. And on the grill space too, I'm going to do some trim above the bumper. Yeah, we're doing? Yeah. Maybe a little bit here. But not too much. You're just, you're just, it's just touches, right, guys? Just touches. Those were big old chrome bumpers. Yeah. Big chunks of metal right there in the front. And so what I'm trying to do is just capture those angles on the car. Which are hard for me. They are. They are tough. One of the tricks that I can do is I can um, come back if I feel like I need to shave something in and use black to do that. And that's a pretty effective process for me. I may get a little more white on here and just also make sure that this chrome is just a little bit more in, in highlight yeah. in, in that space as they are. Now I've got some cool stuff happening over here. That I really like. I'm going to take a little bit of my blue and my white and I'm going to give myself some smoke therapy. My smoke machine is off. Did you turn me off? No, it may have timed out. It has bubble little, me then, baby. Bubble it little, me. It if has it'll a bubble. heater. Huh? What has a heater? The, 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 the. <sighs> bubble therapy will help everything. I'm making a, a lighter blue. And I'm going to come here and I'm going to go up, over the lighter blue, and then I'm going to come down. I'm going to create that little highlight right there. And it's okay if you want to sort of dry brush that forward a little bit. This can kind of come forward. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to come along here. And then when it gets there, I kind of bring it down. There's some interesting body shaping in the car here. Mm -hmm. Get some more blue that's stronger and blend it in. It's got the pure pure phthalo. I'll have to get some pink into uh, my mix here. And the reason being is that the sky would be reflecting all over my car. And it's important that I'm able to show that. I'm going to bring this here. I just want this to be. Sort of a subtle thing that's going on, a little straight blue between these two. John's welcome to type like any car things he wants in the live. He just can't like be like, that's all wrong. No, it's not while I'm teaching. You're doing great. <laughs> you really are. But you're welcome to be like, no, no, it would be like this, like in the chat where I don't don't hear it. 
all good there. All right, I'm just shading this a bit. Because again, we're just trying to capture that little up down that we have some places. Maybe a little more on the roof. A little more highlight on the roof. A little now, bit right there. Are you using just one white there? Yes, I'm only, I'm not using any um, of the uh, da -da 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 tinting or uh, like indirect whites. But it's fluid? Uh, some yeah. of it's fluid and some of it's heavy body. Ah, that's why there's two different. Yeah, that's what you're asking. Totally different answer that I should have given you. That's All okay. right, now I'm going to take my white You're working into it my... out. Your brain's working on body my lines. My brain and... is just like a busy right now, yo. So I'm going to come back here with this pink mix and I'm going to come to the back of this window at the angle. And I'm going to bring this in, just sort of brushing it over. I'm going to come over here on this side. And down and back a little bit. That's nice. I may get some pure magenta in here because I don't want it to be quite so bright. There we go. But I do want to see some some pinks and some purples in there. Now I'm going to go ahead and get some blue. Add that to the window in little loose mark. Come across here. I will come back with my purple now. Put some purple into this and really darken these windows. But we just want to we want to see the sky in the window. Yeah. Those windows look really cool. And I want to make sure that I've got a little something interesting, maybe a foot in a little side window, just a bit. Little vent windows. You don't get those anymore. Yeah, because I guess, you know, I don't know why we don't actually. No idea. I've got a car. You do? It's a car. I has a car. Get my black hair in. There we go. Got a license plate. Yep. Doing things. That's what I'm doing. I'm doing things. So um, underneath that line is sort of a light purple line. Yep. And they come right here with my light purple line. Sort of the that's the belt line that kind of goes around the car. It does a thing. I'm gonna grab a little of my pink purple paint and I'm gonna come right here and add that. Maybe even grab a little bit of the white. Come here. Like to add just a little bit of those colors to some things because they're reflecting all through the car. Add that right there on that little bit of the, the up and down. And maybe coming down this a bit. I still want the car to be visibly black. I'm just trying to make sure that it reads as such. Grab a little blue right here. A little bit right there. You know, you just want to keep those things all afoot. I'm going to grid a little white and black. Okay, if I pick up some blue in it, I'm going to come to the back of the tire and go swish. Boy. Swish. I like how that turned out. Those, that, that's a really nice. I like how those, those tires look very meaty and racy. Here, a little highlight in there. Just so that we can really see them. Yeah. You know, that's an important thing, being able to really, really see them. <sighs> Almost through the car. Oh, yeah. All right, so we need a little more like light reflection on the windows. Yep, little highlights here and there. So we're going to go right here with that very light blue, like that. And I'm going to come here at the corner and kind of go like that. And a little bit here. 
I might add a reflection kind of like right here. And then maybe a bit of something here. That's too much of a bit of something. That's not a bit. That's a lot. That's a lot of reflection. That's a lot of reflection. I don't want that much reflection. Everything you do on the car, man, I'm telling you. And they come along in kind of black lines. Some of this stuff, not all of it. Before I white line it. Sorry if I'm in the way. Oh, you're having doing great. To see. Well, you know, sometimes you got to be like, ah, oh, I'm right here. I got to do this thing. So just a little bit of that kind of sometimes helps a bit. There we go. Just sort of shade that in the tires. I'm going to, while I have everything resting for a second before I white line it, I'm going to get my phthalo blue out and I'm going to mix it with my phthalo green, which is my phthalo turquoise. And that's going to be a lot of what I'm doing on the bottom with my stuff i'll just grab a number eight cat's tongue so i can paint a lot of it real fast and so basically you just take your blue and your green and you mix them together and the first run of this you'll see you just go right over everything underneath the tires and i do like to take this back at just a smidge just a smidge yo of white so when i come back to this Right, I've got that back end. A little bit under there, coming through the front here. And that's looking pretty good, kind of a loose little green thing. Little landscape that we've got going that's happening there. As soon as I have that in, I'm going to get a little of my yellow into this mix. And maybe a little bit of my white. I'm gonna come right under here, brush loosely back and forth. A little of my white. Just adding a little bit of that last of the daylight to the ground before it gets to be nighttime. Okay. All right. When I've got all that in and I'm happy with where my landscape is, and I think this green against that sunset plays really, really nicely, in my opinion. Yep. You can go ahead and clean up any uh, chalk marks that might be remaining because you want to see where you've got to address the car itself. Right? You, you don't want to be confused and think, oh, I've got that totally handled but actually you needed some more stuff. I'm gonna get a little more of my blue and white and I'm gonna come under here and just sort of lightly imply that part of the car. Now I'm gonna come back with some black. I'm in the middle of that, a little bit there. Not everywhere, but it's nice to rem remind yourself you've got a black car going here. Right? So that you go like, oh yeah, baby's a black car. Yep. Now, it's interesting because on baby, it's really, it, all of the, uh, the Impalas like, of, this, of this era were deceptive like this. And they were intentionally this way. That if you looked at it, unless you knew it was a four door or the windows were rolled up so you could see the divider between the two windows, you couldn't tell if it was a two door or a four door, and they did that with that with not having. I told that. John in the designs because he's like, "You do two door or four door." I'm gonna do. I'm like, "It's it's sunset. Can't see no doors. Rule." Well, you you you, you I'm can't. Gonna, I'm gonna. Well, John's talking to you. I'm gonna add a little green to the car. And and the and it is a four door, but you can only really tell that when the windows are rolled up, and that was a design consideration. I'm gonna add a little of this green reflection to the bumper. And a little bit right here, just to kind of pick those up as you do. Now, get a pointy brush that you feel like you've got control over. And if you need them, wear your glasses. I know I do. Yep. And then as soon as we get this white line, we're going to have a big happy dance. 
and then we're gonna uh, put in uh, Sam and Dean, or actually in this case, it's Dean and Sam, and then we're gonna Anokian. Anokian. Yes. So, uh, and I'm sure I'm as bad at spelling Anokian as I am in English, so <laughs> things that I'm sure are true. I'm coming to the top of the car, and I'm gonna just make sure to line the top with a little bit of white lining. I'm going to also kind of do something similar inside this window. Along what is the frame. Notice that I don't like make continuous lines. You're just seeing reflections being picked up by stuff. There we go. Whew. Down the front of the hood. That for me just really helps me. I also find it's helpful to do one kind of down the center of this hood. Talk a little bit about, you know, the fact that there's a thing and I'm going to make a bright reflection by doing those little dots and things right there. If my line is too thick, I'll come back with a little clean brush and thin it out. Yeah, I do? Yep. If I want to get rid of it, I just take it out. Because you've got to be real careful. It can be real easy to throw the whole line of the car off through here. But it's also pretty easy to fix it. So don't like not do it because you're worried you're going to mess something up. And come and add a little bit of reflection. Yay! And uh, let's go ahead and give this little interesting part some lining there. And then it can be nice to come along the top of that. I'm just trying to hit some hot points on the car. Definitely, definitely give a hot point here, just like a reflection along that bend. And I think the last thing to do is get your best lettering brush. Mine is my monogram liner. Which I don't have. So, oh, there, nope, don't have it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to use my number four. You want me to get your monogram liner? It would be great. I don't... You do that. I... I will say hi to everybody, and we'll, hey, we can do the bubbles. I can do the bubbles before. I, can do bubbles while you're I deserve bubbles, because I painted a car, yo. I painted a car, and I helped you Don't paint you? a car. You have one, right? <sighs> Come by for horses or people, which is kind of like my jam. I do. It's so tempting to put like a crossroad sign right here and something underneath the car. Just in my mind. I, but I was like, we got to stop before four hours is up. So I was like, I couldn't just keep adding signs and things. And I was like, oh, thank you. Oh, I can turn this off. That's right. How does this work? There's no unlock. There's no buttons at all. Oh! Operating it now. So the original first season license plate is what I chose to do. Uh, actually, uh, clue, the words up in the uh, sky are season one, episode one. So that's why I wanted to come here. Because I feel like sometimes when, you ha when you're getting ready to say goodbye, it's nice to look back. Those good memories. That's what Sam and Dean are doing here. They're looking back.
Put in that season one plate. Yep. K A Z two Y five. Woo. I love it. Woo. Doing that now. Got all that stuff in. Yeah. Now I get to start putting in the boys, which oh, means yeah. I need to put out because I'm gonna paint Sam and Dean. I need to put out yellow ochre and burn sienna. Where'd burn sienna go? You know I have a whole there it is. I have a whole tube. So here's the thing. Um Sam and Dean have pretty much the same color hair. I'm gonna actually tint back the even the original one I did. I was trying to capture the highlights that is on um Sam's slightly longer hair where it gets a little blonder out at the tips, especially when it grows out. Whereas Dean tends to keep his very closely cropped, like the, like that guy's had that haircut for like 15. Like, how irritating would that be? Like, this is just your haircut for the rest of your life. Cause you have a roll. I don't know what that's like. Um, obviously, as I change my hair every couple of days. But to get him in, my first thing that I want to do is I kind of block in the shape of the figures and what's going on. So I will begin with a little bit of my blue and black and some white, but very dark. Because right, I'm trying to get him in and, you know, have him be in. His little shoulder is here. Really comes across as a square across here and then down is where I really kind of initially see him. And then I just bring all this in. At first, I paint this all blue. And I find it's easier for me to paint a little more of Sam in the beginning. I mean, Dean in the beginning and then paint some of him out. I'm going to come along the front of the car and add this shadow to him so that the car can still stand, stand out against him. Not that it's having a battle with him of any kind. I'm just saying that that way he's the car and him are not at odds. You can always get a little of the brown into this to sort of neutralize this because the Winchester boys wear them some LLB neutral colors. <laughs> they want to blend in. Yeah. So I'm taking that color. That's going to be the collar. And that will let me work the shoulders here. So you want to square those out always. All right, whatever you've got going on on your shoulders, you want to square that out. And then his head, I'm going to begin with a little brown and black together. Light enough to be able to see it, even though I'm going to be darkening it. And a body is six to eight head lengths. So whatever head size you do, it has to be believable that there's, and, and he's closer to, I think, seven um, head lengths. I'd say yeah. Sam is eight and Dean is seven. He's like a head length shorter overall, right? And if you have to touch in anything, it's real easy then to fill in at this stage with just a little bit of paint around him so that he is totally painted in, right? But you can see why I wanted to be thoughtful and get the the breadth of him in at first. Come in now, like while you have him, and like go underneath the collar with the black line. And I think it's also sometimes help, helpful to come in and kind of get the crease of the jacket at this stage. I'll come in and get my black, blue, and brown on my brush, my neutral Dean color, and start to work a little bit of the shoulder highlight. Not the full shoulder highlight, but the beginning. See how it got? Mm -hmm. That way, when I put in his much taller brother, tucked in next to him, let me pull out my dudes that I was referencing. Because I got some dudes. I did kind of take that, him, them off the, their exact thing. I didn't want um, Sam's neck so tucked in, so I kind of have them looking up more. Now this, I'm going to take a little of my black and yellow ochre because he's got more of that neutral khaki jacket. And generally, I try to come up the shoulder like this on, generally. This time, I don't have a generally. <laughs> Bring an elbow back. 
because Sam is one to tuck his hands into his pockets. He's a hand tucker. Bring some broad shoulders over. And then I like to do a bend there. That would be where the elbow's bending back in. And again here, I like to just get a bit. So I can really demonstrate the bend, even though he's got his little jacket there. So how I get that is I like to do darker towards the car. So these colors, this will be more black and yellow ochre. You can go ahead and fill that all the way up. But you need to leave some space near uh, his arms because you'll come back with a much darker color. To shade it. See how we're doing? Yeah. Shading here too. I'm going to shade here as well. Shading! Shading! I'm so, I know I'm thinking. Normally we are much goofier in the lives, but I'm not You're thinking, focused. guys. This is a intense, intense. It's intense thing for, you. for me. <laughs> yeah. No, I get it. But I, I have to say, I've been enjoying it. I've been enjoy watching you put these guys in. Now, this is the last painting of our 13 days of Halloween. For the 13 days of Halloween. This is the last one, and then we're on to all the fall. Fall, 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 fall. It'll be a lot of fall. Mm -hmm. But you guys have 70, uh, as of this painting, you guys have a little over 70. I'm doing the collar right here. Have a little over 70 of these. Halloween holiday paintings. That you can do. <laughs> and why not, right? We have quite a few of them that are fan art. So if you have something that you've been in love with a long time, chances are we've probably got it. And or danced uh, around it. I feel like the elbows would be tucked in. So see, we've got that sort of Sam yeah. slouchy thing afoot here. Now I'm going to start putting uh, the basis in for his hair. And what I'm going to say is similar, similar Dean's hair color, but a little bit lighter. So I'm going to come up here in a little bit uh, longer. Giving him that head shape, though. And I am going to do the longer uh, Winchester, Sam Winchester hair. Not like blowing, but like, remember when it got like a little bit long? Like that long. You know, Shaggy can't get a job long. But, I mean, he's working. <laughs> A working actor, so got a, these guys both got a pretty tough to get job. And much like Star Trek, probably have work just traveling the cons from now on. Yeah, I'm going to continue to create the deep chocolate brown that I had going for Dean's hair, and I like to kind of get the little I don't know roughness of it going. is helpful so one of the ways that i'll do that is i'll grab that detail brush john just brought over for me where'd you put it in the monogram liner i'm gonna dip it in here and i'm gonna get a little bit of my hair loaded onto that and get my glasses down and this is where i really try to convey who's who besides height i get that palette going you know what i'm talking about i do And over here on this side of the head, it's definitely, definitely darker. So I'm, gonna not, I'm not trying to draw on every hair. I'm just trying to capture the, the texture of it. And then down lower, definitely, definitely. I'll get some of my burnt sienna. I'll start to capture that little highlighting that might be happening. There we're doing. And I'm going to get some of my yellow ochre. There's a little bit of this little highlight that's over here. I'm 
I'm going to make sure that I have it kind of represented. Through, all through here. A little bit of that around. Little bit of boy hair. Get his jacket back to the number four. And then we're going to have a lot of chatting to do during Enochian time. <laughs> Enochian time will be a very long, long time of chatting. Will it? Oh, yeah. I am sure I will regret it right in the middle of it. I have well, a cool okay. trick if you want to do it. And it meant a lot to me, so I imagine it might mean a lot to you. I'm going to come up here on his back and add this little bit of a highlight at the shoulder. See how we're doing? Yep. He's got a little bit of a highlight. If you lose too much of your value, bring in your black and your blue again. And just make sure that you're shading it. Now, while he's here, you can do a cool thing. I'm going to grab a little bit of my white liner. And I'm going to just very carefully halo him. Collar. A little off the jacket, and then uh, and the fall. I like those. Those little highlights. Those jean color. jacket in the back. Ugh. Now the other Winchester. I feel like I deserve bubbles for getting through that far. <laughs> Don't you feel like it? I'm gonna push them. Oh, you push them. Do we have any questions before I face Let's Sam? See here. Carry all my wayward son. They were wanting to know if you're considering a doing ID. a 31 days of Halloween. What? They were wondering if you would consider doing a 31 you days. Totally. We actually have a contest going on. If you paint 31 paintings and turn them into us by, what was it, November 5th? Somewhere um, there, yeah. And you can do any of the paintings, of the 70 paintings in the Halloween list. We'll give you a free month of patronage. That's right. A lot of painting for a <laughs> small thing. But hey, all right, maybe you were doing it anyway. So I do have the, we do have a 31 day challenge. I just am not doing 31 days of Halloween, which you by all means do 31. Yeah. I keep my 30 day thing for acrylic April. That's when you see me every day, one time a year. And every day, it makes you too bad at me when I do it, but I do it anyways. When, when we get to the uh, Nokian script, mm -hmm. uh, know, however you say that, uh, Nokia. Okay. Like the phone? It's a Nokia? I'm not even addressing that. I don't know. Texas snowflakes make me feel better. All right. So when you're doing that, you can explain about the next BAQ, when it'll start, and what's going on. Cause yes. But I, we can talk about anything during the long, ever-going Nokia. And as I put it in, if you haven't already found it, I'll tell you what it says and why that's funny. Because you know. That will work. You got to love what you love. All right. How are we doing? Am I doing okay on baby guys? Yeah. I got to love you now. Am great. I doing all right? This is doing great. Okay. Now, him and his hair, we're back into the black and yellow. Back in black. Right? But this time with a lot more white because it's like, really, he loves him some khaki. I'm telling you. The stylist, like, looked at this guy and said, you know what your best color is? Khaki. For all we know, he's like me. He's like, I would have purple hair, but I'm working on this show, and <laughs> Dallas keeps putting me in khaki. So I like to make sure that there's a uh, highlight at the elbow. I'm going to come up here. Brush down a little bit of a highlight across the shoulders. Like you do. One right across this uh, collar, little LL Bean collar. I don't know actually what, probably it's H&M is where it comes from because this is a Canadian show. 
Michael. Uh, Be- it's like, you know, I didn't see it until after we lived in Canada, but I recognize how completely Canadian all the neighborhoods are. Well, once you understand those mountains in the background. <laughs> like, that it, is Canada. And and I guess that's actually called the Mount, the, the Lion's Gate. And oh, so, really? Yeah. So, I and that. kind of kind of the joke was Lionsgate film came around because all the videos, all the films had the lion's gate in the background because those two mountains couldn't be caught. Like if you were filming in that area, you got the mountains. So it was like happening, whether you liked it or not. Be like, right. It is so, on. Now, listen, I'm not of the industry. That's just what I have heard re- re- and remembered probably somewhat wrong, but, that's what you get for a co-host today. <laughs> I'll take it. All right, so I'm going to come in and kind of talk a little bit about his little hair. Curl it up. Blow it back. I've got to get it a little darker than I did last time, I think, just to capture it. Because they were not that far off in hair color. Yeah. Uh, Sam just sometimes got a little bit light on his little ends there. As grown-up hair will sometimes do. Make sure that it's blown though, and a little longer. Now I'm going to come in and add a little of my yellow ochre to this and here on the top. Start to play out some highlights so that could be going on. There we go. Just more on the tip. See how I'm doing it now? I do. More on the tips. A little more of the burnt sienna. Oh, the mountains are called the lions. There you go. And and I guess that so I had some parts of that memory correct in there. <laughs> There there is that blowing Winchester hair. Come in and do a similar thing with white lining. I may come in and do a little black lining first. Thank you, Shirley. What did Shirley have to say? She was helping me with the uh, uh, lions, you know, the mountains. So what you see me doing is just using uh, my fine liner and a little bit of black paint to create some uh, textural interest. And also help demonstrate the clothes. And it can be nice to come in and add a little black line to the hair as well. that slightly longer uh, cloth going. Seriously, I hope neither one of the actors ever watches this show. <laughs> Why not? I'm not making a commentary on anybody's physical appearance, man. Okay, so I'm going to just pull some little white lines out, you know, because he's got blowy hair. You can see it's sort of very different than uh, Dean's. Yeah. I guess I'm like Crowley. <laughs> I focus on certain things. I'm not evil like Crowley. I think if Crowley had painted with me, he'd have been a much different guy. But for sure, Rowena is a Sherpette. If there is a Sherpette, huh. <laughs> she <it's Rowena. laughs> All right. Do we feel like I gave him some pretty good, like, oh, Sam yeah. wavy looking at the universe hair? Definitely contemplating what's next in the journey. I cannot even imagine coming off a show that has run that long and figuring out what I'm going to do next with myself. You know, that would be just so scary. All right. Come in here and just adding these little highlights to the wrinkles on the fabric, which I really like. I 
feel like I really got uh, Sam's old body language pretty well. What do y'all yeah. think? I feel like I did. Your piece. Okay, here we are. Anokian. And I'm going to put out fresh, well, I'll just do it right here. So I'm going to be using a little of my phthalo green, a little phthalo blue, and I'm going to make a turquoise with those. We'll mix that with a palette knife. Da, 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 da. Put out a little fluid blue. Put some right here. And I'm going to get just a smidge of my yellow there because sometimes it can help it glow a bit because you want it to be a little glowy. And I'm going to get a little of that. And some of this blue. Make a very light turquoise color. You see that? Yeah. That's going to make the lettering a lot easier for me. And that in my monogram liner. Now, how I got the uh, circle was I took a, this is a nine and a half inch lid. And you, what you want to do is you just want to place it. Right. And you got to give yourself room to get the letters around everything. So I kind of try to get it here. I'm going to use this chalk pencil. So it's, Still chalk, but it's a pencil. I'm going to use it lightly, guys, because if you press hard, it won't come out. And this is how I get the arc of the words. Now, Diana was asking, could you use art pens for this? Oh, you could way use art pens for this, and it would be smart. Would you like a Posca? I, you, you only have the thick ones. You don't have the good ones in. Oh, And my man. good ones got taken, so I don't know where they are. Hmm. You got absorbed into one of the kits, or I don't know what. That can happen for sure. That can happen for sure. So at the halfway mark right here, I know that I don't want to do that. And the first part of this is driver picks the music. The second part is <laughs> shotgun shuts his cake hole. <laughs> so same, same number of words. And then I was thinking if I have extra room here, because this goes further, that I could put words like Dean or Sam down here, you know, as we need to. Does that make sense? I think so. I think you have silver and gold and fine, though. Do I? If you have fine and I've got silver or gold, I'll do it with those because that'd be a lot easier. I think these are so, I think it's 1.8 to 2.5 millimeter. Just bring them over, I'll know. I'll, I'll bring it to you. I will I will make it easier for me. Let me pull out my Nokian out library alphabet. Those look thick. If you pop pull them open, you'll be like, if they're not uh if they're very pointy point, then they are for sure. No, those are thick. Okay, it's okay. No, I'm gonna letter with this little thing. So I've got my brush and I've got my um thing. I will also kind of go, all right, so they right about here, I've got four spots. I've got to divide this into four. One, two, three, four. So I might move this a bit in that segment. And then it goes really low down here. So one, two, three, four. And chances are I'll need to write something there like Dean. And that's what I will do to make that work. Oh, it's white though. Is it new? Huh? I thought it was. That's why I grabbed the silver paper. This might be. What? This uh, could be. Silver would be good. I know we're just doing anything. There's this thing called a Posca pen, and they're like really amazing for creating lines and energetic elements. And adding a lot of texture to your canvas. They're acrylic. They write really well. They're incredibly uh, resilient. It's my favorite paint pen. I'm not saying that molotovs are not amazing. Uh, and there's, there's many good ones, but these are just the ones that I really, really like. Montana's are good. 
Is it, I can I can prime it myself. Yes. If it, if it's primable, I can prime it myself. Oh, it's okay. That's what I was worried about. Alright. So, watch us prime pens. Alright, maybe it's empty. Did you have to open it, though? I had to open it. That's what I was saying, is that it should have been brand new. Here it comes. Sometimes you have to, instead of pumping up and down, you just hold them down. So what I'm doing is I'm just holding the nib of the pen down, and that's blacked on. Oh. That's over. Oh, okay. Well, it's hard to Okay. One, two, three. So we'll stick. One, two, three, four. So here we go. We're gonna if you need to know what a letter looks like, you just like come here and I'm gonna copy my original note in, which is a little different, I think, than this and we'll just do it here. So always interesting. Writing those little letters. So, I, I, and if you guys know me, you know this is perilous because, like, dry, uh, spelling, not my friend. But there is a look to this script that's difficult to fake. And it is kind of wonderful to do. Like, and you, then you don't know if you have an accent and an Nokian accent. Ah! There we go. Oh, you, you do it beautifully. I don't know that I do it beautifully. No angels have combined and said, you know, good job. <laughs> I say good job. Good job. But that's what Dean said, uh, season one, episode one to Sam, and I always thought that was so funny. I like I to put it. a dot between these two. I think that's always really fun. Yeah. H is a really great letter. Some of them look a lot alike. <laughs> like you're like, you know, it's like Klingon. You're like, who worked on this? <laughs> <laughs> Theoretically, that's what I'm writing. And oh, I'm supposed to write it backwards. But if you guys know me at all, you know, that's not ever happening. <laughs> right. <laughs> I can't write this backwards. That's never going to happen in a million, de zillion de years. Million, de zillion de years. Who else is doing their Enochian? And also, this. I thought if you guys had the alphabet, you could write your own messages on there. There's a lot of folks who really think this is great. I suspect we're going to see more of this. And if you want to translate it, oh, you already told them. Mm-hmm. And it's on the website, too. All right. Music. Uh, music. We're just going to pretend that whatever I'm doing is correct. Yep. I'm trying, though. You're close enough. You got the look. You got the I got message. the look. I used to like kind of do a fake thing version of this. That went a lot faster. I'm like, when, interesting shapes. Woo! When you're when you're more or less following the language, you're doing pretty good. You know? Yeah, I do. It's it's not like there's a Google translate for this watch there actually is. There there uh there are a couple translating tools, but I found them to be uh really unsatisfying. Yeah. Give it a couple of years when the AI takes over. Mm. Mm. Gonna copy what I have. 
and hopefully it is correct. And again, I like the dots. I think they're very helpful in the spacing. I almost did uh, the anti-possession one, but I thought it might make some people uncomfortable. So I was like, if they didn't watch the show. If you watch the show, you're like, yeah, that's cool. But if you didn't, you might be like, what? You know, I, I like in the Scooby-Doo episode where... Baby is sitting next to the mystery machine. And I almost did that. Dean is looking over at Fred. You know, kind of like, you think that old Dodge has got something? <laughs> <laughs> that was really fun. That was, that was one of my favorite episodes. And the one when they came into our universe <laughs> and they were actors. Oh, oh yeah. That was, that so, was good. so good. <laughs> He's married to Ruby. It's like a whole thing. <laughs> You're married to Ruby. Well, You're yeah, married I guess to so. <laughs> and Cass. <laughs> that was awesome. I think, honestly, and I don't know if the other actors think that, but I think he may be the best actor on the show because he's the least like his character, like in real life. Like, he's like in real life, like Rin was in real life, just a complete. Completely, you follow his social media at all, you're like, this guy's a fun goofball. Mm -hmm. But like on the show, it's like, I'm super serious. I'm Castiel. Many, right. many sad things are happening. Oh, where is God? It's like when you find out that Vin Diesel plays Dungeons and Dragons on a regular basis. Like on a regular basis? I, I think he DMs. I disbelieve this. No, I think I, I, I heard like he was a serious hardcore D&Der. I feel like this is something the hardcore D&Ders must be saying. But maybe. It I would be. need to see it with my own eyes. He'll have to put it on his YouTube channel. Oh, well. Could be. When you want to see it with your own eyes on the YouTube channel? Mm, I don't know. I'm, I'm not, like, running my games on YouTube. Yeah, but it's believable we play D&D. That's true. We're pretty dorky. Nobody's like, you guys, D&D? &D? No way. There you go. There's a lot of tabletop gamers out there. I wonder if there's like an angel that their Enochian is like so messy, it's like doctor script and nobody can read it in heaven. <laughs> Metatron, what did I tell you about your oh, handwriting? he's a jerk on the show. Metatron is such a jerk. <laughs> Meta well, Actually, like you know what? He was too, even in Kevin Smith's universe. Yes, he, well, he wasn't, he was just blunt. And I mean... Well, if, if like you're an muse. angel, you don't need to mince words, I guess. I like the muse. Selma Hayek's character. Totally switch shows here on everyone, though. I was at the one where the kids, where their drawings came to life. My daughter used to play at that place. <laughs> no unicorns came and got anybody, though. Cake hole is a big word. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like I don't need the extra room. <laughs> I'm super excited, guys. I cannot even believe we got through this thing. You did. So are you gonna are you gonna sign Sherpa and Noki Nokian? All right. Should I sign <laughs> Sherpa and Nokian? Bubble me up. If 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 they say yes, bubble me. Oh, I'm I'm Sherpa. sure. I'm gonna Sherpa just bubble you on preemptiveness Nokian. because I know Nokian. better. Right? Sherpa. And there's a delay. Should I do it? I'm storky. So just I'm embarrassing to my kids every day. I'm storky. Let's do it. But I wonder it. if I ran out of bubble juice. Okay. Like I've never signed my name in a Nokian. Where is it? No, I saw it earlier. 
Very hard to find the letters sometimes. You know, if they would only put them in alphabetical order, it'd make them easier to find. They could have. Maybe it's just me. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't even complained because I'm like, it's probably just me. It's like, but then if it's written, in, if it's in written Nokian, then you have to, you have to pronounce it like you're, uh, well, I need it backwards. So it's like, it's like, like you're a Fremen. It's a, <laughs> it's the painting word. Sherpa. Sherpa. <laughs> Sherpa. <gasps> it's a painting word. Oh, okay. I'm actually okay with this. I feel I like this it. came out. All right. I got a sunset. I got a car. I got two dudes and Sherpa girl style from behind. You know, that's like my. That's like my jam. Cuz <laughs> from behind. <laughs> With no I think this that turned out great. Is an appropriate use of fan for fun and enjoyment and for fandom and to help you live those stories that you love. I really believe in that. I do absolutely utterly respect copyright. But just remember sometimes we also need to celebrate the things that we love and the property is long time trucky. I'm definitely not a trucker. I'm way more in the, yeah, dude, trucky camp. But, you know, having that be part of your life, I, I can mark things by the stories and books that I've read and the TV shows that I've watched. And it's, it's huge for me. And if it is huge for you, this is a great way to express your love for that. Be good to yourself. Be good to each other. Have a really safe Halloween. And I want to see you at an easel really soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, guys.